Hello mga Kakit Angels! Welcome back for another Mathinate episode. This is Teacher Mika and this is Teacher Joy Me. Today, we will learn about solving problems involving real numbers. Before we start, kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your solutions and answers as we progress with our discussion. Also, look for a place in your home where you feel comfortable and safe. And most importantly, prepare yourself to watch and listen carefully. After going through this module, you are expected to represent real-life situations and solve problems involving real numbers. But before we proceed to the second part of this module, which will be our lesson for today, let's have some review of our previous discussions by evaluating the following real numbers. Number 1, the absolute value of 6 plus the absolute value of 5. Number 2, 0 0.5 divided by 10. Number 3, 2 over 5 plus 3 over 4. Number 4, 4 times 1 and 2 thirds. Number 5, 1 half minus 1 thirds. Number 6, 4 over 9 times 9 over 2. Number 7, 3 over 7 plus 5 over 7. Number 8, negative 2 plus negative 2 plus the quantity of negative times the sum of 10 and 5. Number 9, the value of x plus y if x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 7. And number 10, 10 squared plus 4 raised to 3. I will give you 2 minutes to finish this task. Time's up. Let's check your answers. Number 1. The absolute value of 6 plus the absolute value of 5 is equal to 11. Number 2. 0 0.5 divided by 10 is 0 0.05. Number 3. 2 over 5 plus 3 over 4 is equal to 23 over 20. Number 4. 4 times 1 and 2 thirds is equal to 20 over 3. Number 5, 1 half minus 1 thirds is equal to 1 over 6. Number 6, 4 over 9 times 9 over 2 is equal to 2. Number 7, 3 over 7 plus 5 over 7 is equal to 8 over 7. Number 8, Negative 2 plus negative 2 plus the quantity of negative times the sum of 10 and 5 is equal to negative 19. Number 9, the value of x plus y if x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 7 is equal to 12. Number 10, 10 squared plus 4 raised to 3 is 164. Great job! You are now ready for our lesson today, which is... Solving problems involving real numbers. Let's start with this problem. A cyclist is traveling 33 kilometers per hour from Coronadal City to Santo Nino, South Cotabato. How many meters does the cyclist travel in one minute? I will give you one minute to answer this problem.
Time's up! The correct answer is 550 meters. Did we get the same answer? Okay, great! But, what are the steps you used to solve this problem? We will talk about these step-by-step -step procedures as we go through different examples. Let's start with example 1. There are 8 packs of root juice in a box. How many boxes needed if 40 people are attending the meeting with each receiving 6 packs of root juice? Here's the solution. Step 1. We will first determine the given. So we have 8 packs of root juice in a box. We also have 40 people and each will be receiving 6 packs. And we are about to find the number of boxes of root juice needed. Step 2. We will derive an expression based from the given that we have a moment ago. So, our expression will be the quantity of 40 times 6 divided by 8. For our last step, we will now solve the problem. Remember we have 40 people with each receiving 6 packs of fruit juice. So, we have 40 times 6 is equal to 240 juice packs. Also, each box contains 8 packs of root juice, so we will divide 240 by 8, which will lead us to 30 boxes of root juice, and that answers the unknown quantity in our problem. Example number 2. Lucas added 3 fourths of a bag of soil to his garden, while Matthew added 6 fifths bags of soil to his garden. How much more soil did Matthew add than Lucas? Here is our solution. For step 1, we need to find the given. We have Lucas added 3 fourths of a bag of soil. Matthew added 6 fifths bags of soil to his garden. Now, what is the unknown? Or, what do we need to find? The bag of soil Matthew added than Lucas. We need to find how much more soil did Matthew add than Lucas. For step number two, we will derive an expression based from the given a while ago. Since we are talking about how much more soil did Matthew added than Lucas, we will be getting the difference between them. So we have... 6 fifths for Matthew minus 3 fourths for Lucas. Step number 3. We will now solve the expression. Since we are dealing with subtracting fraction, we can use the butterfly method to solve. We'll multiply 5 and 4 to get our common denominator, which is 20. We then take the diagonals and multiply. 6 times 4 is 24. And 3 times 5 is 15. So we have 24 minus 15 over 20. We get the answer of 9 over 20. Matthew added 9 over 20 more bags of soil to his garden. Example number 3. Four years ago, Mark's age was half of the age he will be in 10 years. How old is he now? Here's the solution. Step 1. We will use a table to represent our given. First, we have Mark's age 4 years ago which will be represented by M-4. Next, Mark's age in 10 years will be M-10. Lastly, half of the age he will be in 10 years will be represented by 1 half times the quantity of M-10. Our unknown quantity now is Mark's present age which will be represented by small letter m. Step 2. We will now derive an equation based from the quantities we established in our table. We have m minus 4 which is Mark's age 4 years ago is equal to 1 half times the quantity of m plus 10 
which is half of his age, he will be in 10 years. Let us now solve our equation. m minus 4 is equal to 1 half times the quantity of m plus 10. We will perform cross multiplication here. So that is 2 times the quantity of m minus 4 is equal to 1 times the quantity of m plus 10. Next, we will apply the distributive property in 2 times the quantity of m minus 4, so that will be 2m minus 2 times 4. On 1 times the quantity of m plus 10, we will just apply the multiplicative identity property which states that any number multiplied by 1 gives the same result as the number itself. We now have 2m minus 8 is equal to m plus 10. Applying addition property of equality or APE, we have 2m minus m is equal to 10 plus 8. With that, we now have the value for m which is 18 and that will represent Mark's age now. Example number 4. Zach has 1,000 coins in his coin bank consisting of 10 peso coin and 5 peso coin. If the total cash is 5,500 pesos, how many of each type of coins are in the coin bank? Here is our solution. Step 1. We will now identify our given. Zach has 1,000 coins in his coin bank consisting of 10 peso coin and 5 peso coin. Also, we have a total cash of 5,500. For the unknown, or what do we need to find, is the number of 10 peso coin and number of 5 peso coin. Step number 2. For us to easily visualize the problem, we will represent it using a table. First, let's have the coin value. We know that the given consists of 10 and 5 peso coins. Next, we have the number value. We also know that the total coins, not the total cash, is 1,000. We will first represent the number of 10 peso coin as x and the number of 5 peso coin as 1,000 minus x. After that, we will be multiplying 10 to x and 5 to 1,000 minus x. And since we are talking about how many of each type of coins are in the coin bank, we will be adding the result a while ago and equate it to 5,500. So our equation will be 10 times x plus 5 times the quantity of 1,000 minus x is equal to 5,500. Let's have step number 3. To solve our equation, we will first apply the distributive property in 10 and x, so we have 10x. And in 5 times 1,000 minus x, we have 5 times 1,000 is 5,000 minus 5 times x is 5x equals 5,500. Applying the addition property of equality, we have 10x minus 5x equals 5,500 minus 5,000. Combining like terms, we have 10x minus 5x is 5x equals 5,500 minus 5,000 is 500. Applying the multiplicative property of equality, or we just simply divide both sides by 5, we got x equals 100. Now, completing the table a while ago, we have x equals 100, 1000 minus 100 equals 900. So therefore, there are 100 10 peso coin. And there are 900 5 peso coin. Let's now have our last example. 
On the last mathematics quiz, Lani answered 4 over 9 of the problems correctly, while May answered 9 over 10 of the items correctly. If each problem is worth the same amount, who got the higher score? Step 1. For our given, we have 4 over 9 for Lani and 9 over 10 for May. What do we need to find now? Correct! The student who got the higher score. For our step 2, again, we will make a table which will represent the given that we previously stated. So we have under Lani, 4 over 9, and under May, we have 9 over 10. Lastly, from the table that we made, we will just perform cross multiplication. First, we have 4 times 10, which is 40, and 9 times 9, which is 81. Now, we will just compare the two products, which obviously states that 40 is less than 81. We can now conclude from our illustration that May got the higher score than Lani. Congratulations! You just finished the second part of this module. You can now answer what's more on page 24, what I have learned on page 25, and what I can do on page 26. That ends our lesson today. We hope you learned something. See you on our next episode, Calculate Angels. Keep safe!